So hello everyone and welcome to tonight's public hearing for the bus network redesign. We are going to allow a few extra minutes for people to join and we will get started soon. Thank you for your patience. So for folks just joining, we're letting people settle in and we're gonna join, we're gonna get started very soon. So I think we're going to give it one more minute. Okay. Terry, can you go to the next slide? So hello everyone and welcome to tonight's public hearing for the bus network redesign. My name is Reagan Cecchio and I will be serving as the moderator for tonight's meeting. Next slide. I would like to note that all MBTA activities, including public meetings, are free of discrimination. The MBTA complies with all federal and civil state civil rights requirements preventing discrimination on the basis of race, color, national origin, limited English proficiency, and additional protected characteristics. We welcome the diversity from across our entire service area. If you have any questions, oh, please visit www.mbta.com forward slash title six, that's title V and I, to reach the Office of Diversity and Civil Rights. Next slide. I would also like to remind everyone of the rules for participating in this meeting, as well as remind everyone that this meeting is being recorded. In addition to this virtual hearing tonight, we will also be holding a second in-person hearing at 10 Park Plaza on Thursday night. Before we can begin this evening's presentation though, I do want to review a few technical aspects of the Zoom platform. Next slide. We have ASL interpreters tonight for the meeting. Uh, they will be spotlighted, so you will see them on screen throughout. We also have interpreters who are translating the meeting tonight into Spanish, Haitian Creole, and Mandarin. If you require these services, please click the interpretation button on your screen, that's the globe icon, and select which language you wish to hear. At this time, I will ask that all English language speakers to please select English as their chosen language. This will allow you to hear translated non-English comments during the comment portion of tonight's meeting. Next slide. You can also view, clo view closed captions by clicking the closed captions feature and selecting from the option shown. Show subtitle will display a caption at the bottom of the screen. View full transcript will display the meeting's audio transcription in a window to the right. Next slide. All attendees are muted during the presentation to, present, uh, to prevent excessive background noise. Later in the meeting, we will be accepting written and verbal comments. I do want to note now that there will be a two minute time limit on verbal comments so we can hear from as many people as possible. To make a written comment, you can click the Q&A icon at the bottom of your window. When Q&A window pops up, you can type your comment into the comment box. To provide your comment anonymously, you can also click the send anonymously checkbox before clicking the send button. 
These comments will not be visible to attendees once submitted, but we will be reading all of them and logging all of the comments received. I will also note that if um, someone does respond to one of your comments, um, that will be noted publicly. Um, so that will be public. If you do have a technical problem tonight, please share your issue using the Q&A feature at any point during the meeting with a member of the project staff and we will respond as quickly as possible. Next slide. I would now like to introduce David Panagor, Chief Administrative Officer for the MBTA to provide some opening remarks. David. Thanks, Regan. Good evening, everyone. I'm David Panagor, Chief Administrative Officer at the MBTA. I'm pleased to be here to kick off this public hearing for our bus network redesign program. Transit is essential to the region's economy, especially post pandemic, and the MBTA buses serve our most transit dependent populations. The region has experienced dynamic change and we need a bus service that changes with it. It is essential that the MBTA's bus network adapts. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity to make bold improvements to the MBTA's bus network for the people that depend on it most. We're considering where people wanna go, where people live, and where people work to create a better, more equitable service for our riders. But this isn't just a proposal to redesign our bus maps. We're also reinvigorating the entire bus system. We do that by envisioning a number of new high frequency routes that get people where they wanna go, to new places of employment and to new places of housing concentration across our system. We also do it by increasing service. We plan to increase bus service by 25% across the network and by 70% on the weekends. We also plan to provide hundreds of thousands of riders with high frequency service. That's a bus stop stopping, that's a bus stopping at a bus stop every 15 minutes or better throughout the service day. To make these improvements, there are gonna be changes and trade-offs. Change can sometimes be challenging, but we think the benefits are clear. We're building a better and more equitable service for current and future bus riders that better reflects the changing travel needs of the region through a new bus work network that is simpler and easier to understand with higher frequency and better connections. We're excited about this and we wanna hear from everyone here, especially our bus riders. This is our bus network proposal, but it's still a draft. The map will change meaningfully based on the feedback we receive from riders and hearing from you will make it better. Now I'll turn it over to Doug John Johnson. Thank you very much, David. Hi everyone, my name is Doug Johnson and I'm the project manager for the bus network redesign. Uh, this slide shows tonight's agenda. I'll give a quick overview of the project, talk about our goals and guiding principles, the benefits of our proposed network, go over the public outreach to date, and then talk about our next steps before opening the meeting to public comment. This meeting really is about listening to the feedback of folks here tonight. So the presentation will be brief. Before we get into the presentation, I wanna reiterate a point that David made. The proposed network map is a draft. And when we initiated the public outreach effort for it, we did so with the intention of getting feedback from the public and then making meaningful changes to the map based on that feedback. We've heard a lot of great feedback from folks in communities all over our service area, and we're taking all of it into consideration. That's true of what we hear tonight at this meeting as well. So thank you in advance for your comments and your feedback on the proposed bus network redesign map. Your participation in this process will help make the new bus network better. Next slide. The bus network redesign is a complete reimagining of the MBTA's bus network so that the network better reflects the travel needs of the region. We're doing this because over the past few decades, the region has changed a lot, but the bus network hasn't. Because transit service is essential to the region's economy and to everyone's quality of life, it's essential that the bus network adapts to those changes. Next slide. Since the launch of the Better Bus Project back in 2018, 
we've been listening to our riders about what makes great bus service. We've heard that it needs to go where people want to travel, when they need it, it needs to be simple to use and easy to understand. It has to be fast, frequent, and reliable, and it needs to serve the people who need it most. Next slide. To that end, we've drafted a new network that puts equity first by prioritizing the needs of the people who depend most on buses. We've also focused on creating more frequent service in busy neighborhoods and focusing more on frequency over one seat rides. We're proposing more all day service seven days a week with new connections to more places, including better rapid transit connections. And lastly, we've proposed a network that's simpler and easier to use by minimizing route variations and deviations so that the network works better for everyone. Next slide. We are proposing to double the amount of high frequency service, including increasing the number of high frequency corridors from 15 in the existing network to 30 in the new network. The maps on this slide show the existing network of high frequency routes on the left, and the map on the right shows the proposed network of high frequency routes. Next slide. This proposed network better serves many communities in our area many more communities in our area than the existing network, and will provide high frequency service to approximately 275,000 more people, as well as 115,000 more residents of color and 40,000 more low-income households. As David mentioned, we're also proposing a 25% increase in bus service across the network with a 70% increase in weekend service. Next slide. Under this proposal, employment centers outside of downtown receive substantially more frequent service, increasing access by frequency by frequent service to tens of thousands of more residents. This slide shows how many people approximately would gain access to these destinations by frequent service in the proposed network. Next slide. Fundamentally, this is a better network for people who ride the MBTA. And it was created in part by listening to our riders for the past several years. Next slide. Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> but we know the proposed network is not perfect. So we're relying on public input to make it better. We've already heard many comments about ways in which the proposed network could be improved. And we are using that feedback to come up with changes to the proposal to make it better. This slide has a couple great examples of feedback we've received that is helping us consider changes. For example, we've heard a lot of comments about bus routes in South Boston. We're actively looking at what potential changes we could make there in response to those comments. We've also heard a lot about comments, heard a lot of comments, excuse me, from folks in Somerville, including this one here on the bottom right that asks for better connections to Davis Square. And we're looking at that too. We've received comments from riders, communities, and elected officials from every part of our bus service area. And while I can't promise that we will make every change suggested to us, you will see meaningful changes made to the draft map based on the comments we are receiving. Next slide. The public engagement process for bus network redesign has been a, one of the most extensive public engagement efforts in MBTA history. Since launching the draft map in May, we've received over 10,000 comments on our online survey, held focus groups in partnership with community organizations, attended by over 300 people, held eight virtual regional public meetings, over 10 meetings of our project task force, held over 30 meetings with municipal staff, conducted two dozen street team and open house events at stations, held over 20 briefings with elected officials, advertised the project in multiple languages in newspapers, on radio, in, on stations, on, excuse me, in stations and on buses, and in response to feedback that there were still folks who ha we had not reached 
we recently began running audio announcements on buses informing folks of this process. Next slide. We know not everyone can participate virtually. So we've made a major effort to reach riders in person at stations and bus stops. These images here are from station open houses and street team events where our staff go out in person with materials about the project and talk to riders about what we've proposed and how they can get involved. But we know that even with all of the methods we've used, there are still people who have not heard about this process. So we ask for your help as we are reaching the end of the public comment period at the end of the month. Please let all of your neighbors know about this process if they don't already know about it. We wanna hear from as many people as we possibly can so that we can make the best bus network possible. Next slide. So where do we go from here? After the public comment period closes, we'll review every single comment that we've received and we will make changes to the map based on what we heard. Due to the sheer number of comments that we have received, we expect to have them all reviewed and the map updated by this fall. We will then hold additional public outreach to present the updated map. Next slide. Implementation of the new bus network will be done in phases over a five year period starting in 2023. Throughout that process, we will continue to conduct public outreach to notify riders in advance of any changes being made to the network. As we implement the new network, we will ensure that any new bus stop is accessible, that all new rapid transit to bus transfers will be accessible, or else we will seek alternate routing until the transfer can be made accessible. And we will identify any capital improvements, that's things like construction, that would be needed at transfer locations as well as other locations in the network. Next slide. You can continue to follow this process and stay involved by visiting the project website, signing up for our email list, or emailing us. We hope that you do continue to stay involved and continue to provide feedback because your input will make the bus network better. Next slide. With that, I will turn it over to Reagan for public comment. Thank you, Doug. Um, so as Doug mentioned, we're mostly here to listen to you tonight. And I want to review a few details about the comment process um, first before we start taking comments. And then we're gonna turn to comments from elected officials first. Um, before you begin raising your hands to provide a comment, I will ask that you hold off until I explain the whole process. Then we'll ask the elected officials to speak. And after those comments conclude, I will give you all the prompt to raise your hand if you would like to provide a verbal comment. Next slide. If you would like to share a written comment tonight, you can use the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen to submit your typed question or comment. Due to time constraints, we will not be reading all of the written comments, but as Doug mentioned, we are reading and logging all of them. And your comment will be included in that analysis. If you do have a question about the presentation or about the map, you may share it through the Q&A feature and time permitting, staff will try to provide a written response that will be shared with the whole meeting. Um, I do want to make a note right now, there were some technical questions in the chat. I believe someone had questions about the interpretation button going missing. Um, it is true with you are on phone only audio, um, there is no interpretation um, button on that screen. So just as a clarifying question there. Um, and I know some others were having trouble seeing the slides tonight, but we're in the public comment period. So I think it will mostly be listening and looking at Doug and my faces. Um, I also wanna take the opportunity to introduce Melissa DeLay, who will also be listening to public comments. Um, she's the Senior Director of Service Planning at the MBTA. Um, so now that I've talked about the written comments, if you would like to make a comment verbally, 
you can press the raised hand button and we will recognize you when it is your turn to speak. In order to hear from as many comments, or as many people as possible tonight, we will have a two minute time limit on those verbal comments. At the two minute mark, I will let you know your time is up and provide you a few moments to wrap up your remarks. For those who are joining on the phone, you can raise your hand by pressing star and the number nine. For attendees who speak Spanish, Haitian Creole, and Mandarin, please raise your hand to provide your comments verbally for the interpreters to hear and repeat your remarks. When we recognize your name, you will be unmuted and you may speak. Um, after you share your comment, we will lower your hand and you will then be returned to the muted state. Um, you will not be on video, um, this is the format of this Zoom, but if you are, um, would like to speak with ASL or need those services, please let us know in the um, Q&A and we will make that happen for you tonight. So after all of that, um, I will now like to invite any elected officials in attendance or their staff to ask questions or make comments. So if you are not an elected official or staff member, I would ask that you lower your hand momentarily and then um, and elected officials or staff members, please uh, raise your hands and we will recognize and unmute you. Okay. So um, I will see Eugene Benson. Uh, Shana, do you uh, mind unmuting him? Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Right. Yeah, thank you for taking my comments. I'm an elected town meeting member in Arlington and a member of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. And I think this project is going in exactly the wrong way for Arlington and for the economic and housing development we hope, in, we hope to have in Arlington. While it does a better job for the Broadway corridor, the main corridor in town is Mass Ave, and it does a really bad job in Mass Ave by only having the 77 bus, which is the only high frequency bus in the proposal, but the same frequency as before going down Mass Ave. We need buses to go to Alewife. We need the 79 bus restored and we need it on 15 minute headways during commute hours and maybe half hour headways on non-commute hours. We need the 67 bus to come back and to go to Alewife and not uh, the new proposal for the bus that comes out of Sims. Along Route 2, where a lot of people also go to catch the bus, um, we need um, the 84 bus restored and we need um, better connectivity with this or more frequent service with the 78 bus to Harvard Square. It used to run every 20 minutes. Um, during commute hours, and I think are proposing it to be approximately once an hour. That's a way to kill a bus. People will simply not take that bus if it's only once an hour. Um, um, that's it. I think we're going in the wrong direction completely. The 54 bus, the new bus, is nice, but it's not a must have. The things that I mentioned are a must have. Most people take the bus in Arlington. When they go to work, the work centers are not in the direction of the 54. Then they get on the red line at Alewife, Boston, so, Cambridge. My time is up. I your know. time is up. Thank, Thank you, you very much for the opportunity to comment. Thank you so much for your comments tonight. Um, okay, so we're in an elected official. So if you're an elected official, um, please, uh, you may raise your hand. And I see. Uh, Willie Burnley, Shana, can you unmute him, please? Thank you. Um, Willie Burnley Jr. here, Somerville City Councilor at large. Um, I want to call in today just to voice the concerns from a number of my constituents um, who we've heard from over the last few months. Um, uh, although there are a lot of reasonable praises for this plan around increases in service. Um, I see uh, an overwhelming amount of concern around the elimination of uh, Route 88, 89, 
80, which um, connect some of the most uh, underserved parts of our community to each other, uh, particularly East Somerville, all the way to uh, Davis Square. Uh, when we look at this planet Somerville, a lot of people see it as a reduction in the ways that people move around our city in service of moving us out of the city, moving us toward Boston. Um, and I have to say as a Somerville elected official, we are not just a conduit to get to Boston. We have our own community and life here that we cherish very much and would really um, love the, the MBTA to be a partner with us on in improving. Uh, and so I'd love to invite um, the staff here to, to speak with me, to speak with the other elected officials in Somerville um, about how we can make sure that our services are not uh, reduced within the city and it said can serve the needs of the folks who are taking the bus the most. The communities that we see who need these services to actually get around and get to their work, um, those lines are either being eliminated entirely or reduced, um, including the 87 and 88, which serve Clarendon Hill, uh, which is where some of our public housing is. Um, so although I as someone who doesn't have a car and uses the bus and the T quite often. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you can wrap up. I just wanted to give you the two minute warning. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I'll just say as someone who doesn't use a car uh, and relies on the, the MBTA quite often, uh, I appreciate the, the attempt to make this more robust um, in terms of timing, but we must uh, do it in an equitable way that ensures that the folks who need it the most are having their buses stay alive. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. We appreciate your comments. Um, I also am noting I'm hearing some uh, requests for me to speak more loudly, so I'm going to do that. And we also had some requests from our interpreters that for those of you who are providing remarks tonight and comments, if you could speak uh, slowly and clearly uh, to give the interpreters time to catch up, um, that would be much appreciated. Um, so uh, we're still in the elected official uh, part of the proceedings. Um, I see, so if you are an elected official, please keep your hand raised. Um, if not, we'll ask you to hold. Um, I see Mela, Mela Bush. Shana, can you unmute? I am not an elected official. Okay, would I you like- I just lowered my hand because I wasn't an elected official. Okay. <laughs> But I wanted to keep my hand up to speak after elected officials. Got it. Um, all right. We will, uh, if you raise your hand, we'll come back to you. Thank you for letting us know. Adam Sweeting. Not an elected official. I'm a former elected official, but I'd, I'd raise my hand. So I, I will wait until the other elected officials have, have their chance. Okay, I think there's no more elected officials who have their hand raised right now. So I will go back to uh, Mela and then let's everyone else can feel free to raise their hands. Mute. Yes, I am Mela Bush and I am um, from the T Riders Union and I live in Roxbury and I use a whole bunch, I use a system. Uh, my, my comments tonight, um, we're recommending that this process be halted and that the MBTA reconsider most of the recommendations that were made, although there are some that we like, like the 20 and the 26 bus. First, I'm going to feature the 14 bus. The segment of the 14 bus route from the VA hospital to Nubian station was cut completely with no replacement service. We're asking that you put, do not do that. The last leg of the, loop, the route leading to Roslindale Square, providing access to three schools and the RMB, was changed, sending the bus to Walcott Square in Reedville. We had a campaign called Fix the 14. We asked the team to do that, not to do this. Um, the segment going to um, the VA hospital provides access to seniors as well as veterans 
to get to the hospital. And there are schools down there that we have um, interviewed students that go to schools along the uh, Heath Street and there's no replacement there. It just cut the whole thing out. Uh, the 29 bus was changed to an Ashmont loop um, going from Ashmont Station. It's currently running for free. Um, it never went to Ashmont Station. Um, it, it goes from Mattapan to Jackson Square and connects seniors to um, food and other such things um, and medical care, et cetera. The 23, the 28, the 22, the 39, the 10, the 8, the 41, the 38, the 45, the 44, and the 16. I can't go into details because you only gave me two minutes to say these things. But we need buses that are running uh, to, um, to Ruggles Station to continue to run to Ruggles Station and not just be redirected into the Longwood Medical Area. There's also so a I'm bus. I'm sorry, it is a, just your two minute warning. What does that mean to stop speaking now? If you could just. I will wrap up. This Thank last you. thing that I wanted to say, that um, in the interest of um, simplicity, a special trip for the 15 bus route will be eliminated because uh, people didn't understand how it worked and it made the 15 bus uh, route look complicated. But this bus uh, service only runs at 4.35 a.m. And it provides bus service for early morning shift work, workers to access jobs and for travelers going to the airport for early morning flights. And in this plan, it will just disappear because it didn't fit into what the 15 bus did for the rest of the day. Please rename the route, keep it, and let it run at 4.35 in the morning so that people can get to work. Thank you Thank so you. much for your comments. I will also just make sure everyone knows that if you have longer remarks that you would like to make, please um, feel free to type them up and put them in the question and answer comment, um, uh, written comments. Um, we welcome detailed comments and I know we are reading all of them tonight. All right, so Adam Sweeting again. Uh, Shana, can you unmute Adam? Uh, th thank you very much. And first, I, I appreciate the opportunity to to speak tonight and for the efforts to increase uh, access in, in underserved neighborhoods. But I do want to uh, follow up uh, on um, some remarks that Councillor Burnley made about Somerville. Uh, I'm actually the former chair of the Somerville School Committee. I'm no longer uh, an elected official, uh, but I've lived in Somerville for, for a long, long time. And I'm very concerned about the, the potential or the proposed closing of the 88 and the 80 routes. These are uh, two bus lines and I'm, I'm not discounting any other comments about other routes that other commenters might make, but th these are the two that I know the most. Uh, and I ride the 88 daily actually, but the, both these routes are, um, are vital to the educational process in the city of Somerville. Uh, they bring students and staff to Somerville High School. Uh, and as Councillor Burnley earlier said, uh, the 88 in particular uh, brings students from the Clarendon uh, Hills uh, project, which is um, uh, one of our housing uh, facilities here in, in the city. So I, I'm concerned that this proposal at the exact historical moment when we have finally connect, reconnected Somerville uh, through the Green Line extension, uh, we're now potentially eliminating the central routes through the city um, that could connect the east part of the city to the west side of the city. And I think that this is going to lead to actually more congestion, more driving, more traffic throughout the center of the city. When we built the new high school, we actually lost hundreds of parking spaces. And we were told that, okay, we are now going to encourage people to use the bus to get to the high school or to the city hall. Um, and now that, that potentially won't happen. So I, this is a process that I think needs to be rethought through, uh, reimagined uh, to make sure Except that at true. the very moment that we're reconnecting Somerville through the Green Line, we're not losing movement through the city of Somerville through these, through these key bus lines. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for your remarks. 
Okay, um, Mark Millman, Shana, can you unmute him, please? Mark? I'll be brief. Oh, great. It does not matter if you improve service times on bus lines because bus bunching is so consistently bad and so consistent that the, the on lines that already have that kind of every 15 minutes or better service, you often have to wait 30 to 40 minutes for a bus because of bus bunching. Beyond that, I think you in fact right now have the technology to deal with it, but it hasn't been applied. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Terry F. Alther. Shana, can you unmute Terry? Hello. Hi. Uh, can, uh, can you hear me? Yes. You're all set. Okay, thank you. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Terry Alter. Um, I live in West Newton. Um, do I need to say address or no? No, you do not. Okay, so I live in West Newton. I'm a frequent rider of the 553 and 554 buses, and I do take the 505 when I have to get into Boston. Um, I wanted to comment on the, um, the, the network redesign. Um, you know, I think that there's definitely issues I have with it, uh, most notably the, the issues that were raised from Somerville and Arlington particularly. But um, I do want to mention here like that the redesign, I think, would have at least the way it's structured now for Newton, I think would have very negative effects um, for starters. Um, eliminating the 505 uh, between Commonwealth Avenue um, in Auburndale and West Newton Station would drastically leave a huge transit desert. Um, between um, that section of Newton. Um, it also would make it extremely awkward um, during uh, late morning when there aren't any trains um, headed, uh, you know, outbound trains headed to Auburndale Station or in the evening when there aren't any um, inbound trains headed from Auburndale Station into the city. Um, I also think there are other issues such as, you know, drastically reducing the amount of express buses from what used to be, I think, like five or six down to just one, um, you know, there's a lot of people who uh, commute in and out of Boston uh, in the mornings. And I think that that is not exactly the best use of resources. Um, I think there was a comment about buses that were underutilized. I think, you know, getting rid of this 170, even though it only ran twice a day before the pandemic, I think is a huge missed opportunity. And, um, you know, I will also say like some of these buses, like, well, it's great to, um, that we're having like routes like the 61 and having all day service for 59 and 52. Um, you know, I do think that the frequency should be drastically increased, especially for the 61, at least the proposed 61 route, since there are many developments that are popping up in and around Newtonville and possibly in West Newton soon. And so. that is not going to be enough um, for the time being. And, you know, I think that, you know, two, there are a lot of warning. Sorry. And I'm just going to say, I do think like for Newton, I think there were a lot of missed opportunities with the uh, redesign. I think it would be nice to have cross service from uh, Boston College to like towards Riverside or Auburndale. And uh, I will say the one nice thing is I do like the 54 because for a long time, there needs to be an out, outer loop, uh, outer ring uh, bus route. And I do like that there is going to be a bus from Riverside to Arlington to make it easier to get to Somerville. So that's all I will have to say. But I do think that there were a lot of missed opportunities. And I hope the Transportation Advisory Group in Newton can come up with some better alternatives. Thank you for your comments. Um, I also want to take an opportunity. I think there were some questions. I forget that in this webinar mode that you people cannot see the number of attendees tonight. Um, we have 187 total participants, including staff. So that makes it about 173 attendees tonight for those who were curious. Okay, so David Coughlin, Shana, can you unmute David? David? David, I don't know if we. If, if I apologize. There's a unmute button for me to press too. Yes. Me. No, no uh, worries. Yeah. So thank you. Um, so I'll get right to it. Um, calling or commenting on the 354 bus. Um, it's an express bus that comes from uh, Burlington, basically through Woburn, and then on 93 directly to State Street. 
um, this box is scheduled to be eliminated. Um, and you know, I, I looked at the overall plan. I didn't do any math, but I got to tell you, I can't see the 25% increase. Um, it, but this bus is is critical. It takes people um, who would otherwise uh, have to drive a distance to get to a bus uh, and then get downtown, um, and that or just drive downtown, which adds cars to to uh, the already crowded 93. Um, there could be some uh, reduction in in frequency, and you know, as opposed to other people, I, I think if we reduced it uh, to hourly versus half hour, um, that would mean people would just have to get there sooner. Um, but um, and that would depend on volume of the buses. But in general, I think um, overall management of the MBTA uh, is is highly. Uh, in need of replacements. Um, I was on, a, on that same bus today. There was a bus driver that didn't even know how to get to downtown Boston from 93, and there's a passenger who hadn't put tell him. That's a function of management. And this is a function of management too, and I think it's being mismanaged. Um, I'd like to see all of management be replaced, which probably is a controversial thing to say here, but overall 354 needs to stay and something has to do be done about management. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Um, let's see, Greg Hill is next. Shana, can you unmute Greg? Well, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, I'm Greg Hill. I'm a Somerville resident and I'm a member of Mass Senior Action Council, uh, Cambridge Somerville chapter. <clears throat> I want to echo the concern of Councillor Bernie Burnley from uh, about the 89 route. Uh, this is uh, the 89 route is very vital to people in East Somerville, and uh, there should be no uh, elimination of it whatsoever. A lot of people depend upon that, and I have many, many people I know in uh, East Somerville are concerned about that. Also, um, I hope there is not going to be any cutback on the 87 route, which is vital to people, um, especially going from Leachmere and Union Square to uh, Clarendon Hill, uh, and a connecting point to the red line in Davis Square. That should not be, uh, you know, reconfigured as to cut off, um, requiring a transfer to Davis Square. That just uh, you know, uh, confounds common sense. Um, also, I've heard from some of my Mass Senior Action Council uh, uh, members that the, uh, the redesign looks as if it's going to require uh, seniors to use a lot of transfer with the redesign and um, you know, not just one transfer, but a double transfer. And that really puts seniors at a uh, disadvantage. Um, also, uh, cutting back on the number of bus stops, especially in places like Mass Ave, uh, forces seniors to walk further uh, to, to a bus stop. And uh, that's not good for uh, seniors and people with disabilities. Uh, and uh, Finally, I believe that the- um, It's just, it's a two minute warning for you. Thank right. you. Green Line Extension, which is going to be opening, well, we have the, the Union Square stop, which is great, but the rest of the Union uh, Green Line Extension running up to, uh, ultimately running up to Route 2 uh, by the end of the summer, I believe, I don't believe there's any connecting buses to any of these stops there, like Ball Square, Magoon Square. That is, you know, that's, uh, that runs counter to uh, common sense. It needs to be connecting buses to those various stations. Uh, Greg, also, I, Greg, I'm gonna probably ask you to wrap up, please. Greg? Okay. Um, Thank you for your comments. Again, I will urge you all, um, anyone who has uh, extensive comments, um, please type them in the Q&A feature at the bottom. 
Um, if you have a specific question, we will try to respond in written format there. Um, but also, if it's a comment, we will be reading and logging all of them tonight. Um, so now it looks like Brian Halter is next. Brian, uh, Shana, can you unmute Brian? Brian, can you, you may have to unmute yourself. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, this is Brian. Uh, I work in the affordable housing industry and I've called in to uh, speak out against the proposed elimination of the 92 bus that runs from Sullivan Square down Main Street in Charlestown and ends in downtown. This is a critically important route to the neighborhood of Charlestown as it provides direct service to downtown for hundreds of low-income families and seniors that live along the route and use the bus to get to jobs, doctor's appointments, and other services downtown. Removing this route would fly directly in the face of the MBTA's stated goal of providing faster and more equitable service to our most transit-dependent communities. Telling current riders to just take the Orange Line or the 93 bus instead is extremely disappointing to hear. The Orange Line has been reduced to weekend level service and is often delayed or broken down as we've seen recently with fires and the closures around Haymarket. And to get to the 93 bus, people would need to walk up multiple steep hills, which are physically impossible for seniors to climb year round and equally as hard for other people during the winter months. Either way, those other options would add 20 plus minutes onto people's commutes, which would further reduce those low income residents access to jobs and services. The MBTA has also touted increased bus service in Charlestown but the reality is that rush hour service would be reduced by 50%. There's currently six combined 92 and 93 buses running between Charlestown and downtown during rush hour. With the proposed changes, that would be reduced to just four. Reducing rush hour service by 50% while simultaneously reducing the bus routes from two to one means the buses will undoubtedly become overcrowded and completely full before it even gets to the last few stops in town. Furthermore, the plan calls for the new 93 route to be extended to South Station and the Seaport to act as a South Station North Station link. This would mean those buses would likely become completely full by the time it leaves the Seaport, and riders trying to get from downtown to Charlestown wouldn't even be able to get on the bus. So the 93 bus then doesn't even become a replacement option. In closing, I'd like to ask the MBTA to reconsider their plan to remove the 92 bus and also to explain in a detailed way exactly how the proposed elimination of the 92 bus would provide more equitable and reliable service to the most transit dependent residents in Charlestown. Thank you, Brian. Um, I would like to take a suggestion that I got in the Q&A, which is an excellent one. Um, I'm going to uh, not only read the next person who's has their hand raised, uh, but the person who is on deck as it were, because uh, I, I forgot that it's not visible to everybody and that way we can uh, you can prepare yourselves and you know that you're coming in the queue. So we'll first go to Hala Jadala and then the person after that will be Amber McMahon. So Hala. Oh, now you can hear me now. Yes, Hi, I can. I'm a Somerville resident and um, the ADA bus to the high school is mandatory because if I didn't have the ADA bus when I was in high school, I probably would have quit school because my mother did not have a car to drive me. Even though she had a license, she didn't have a car to drive me. We couldn't afford a car. We lived in the projects. Now you want to take the 89 bus. Now my mother lives in a different area and she has a woman that comes and takes care of her, helps her out with her stuff during the day since I'm working all day long. She takes the 89 bus from Davis Square to her house. If this happens and then cut this bus, I can get her one way there because she'll have to come early in the morning, like two hours before she starts work. And then I don't know how she's gonna get home. So, and we have a lot of handicapped people and I drive the 89 route from Davis Square to um, McGrath Highway every day to go to work and I see at least a dozen or two dozen people waiting at 8, 8.30, 7.30 for the bus in the morning. So please don't cut any bus routes. These, these have been working well for, for the last 50 years as long as I lived in Somerville and we wanna keep it this way. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. So our next speaker will be Olivia Mullen and Jay Wilberforce um, will follow her. So Olivia. 
Good evening. Good evening, everyone. My name is Olivia Mullen, and I'm the manager of the transportation department at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. Dana-Farber was again just today actually named U.S. News and World Report ranked number one best hospital for cancer care in New England and number four nationwide. We support this unique opportunity to redesign the MBTA's bus network. For decades, Dana-Farber has participated in transportation programs designed to support higher levels of T ridership, such as the Longwood Collectives, formerly MASCO, last mile shuttle system, and transportation demand management programs. We also provide close to 30,000 T passes annually to support and incentivize employees to travel by transit. We very much recognize the potential that this initiative holds in improving transit access for our current and future workforce here in Longwood, especially for those residing in neighborhoods with historically poor access and lower levels of car ownership. The trade-offs involved in improving bus service are also important to us. Any improvements to bus access must prioritize emergency and non-emergency transportation for patients and accommodate the transportation needs of the many thousands of workers and visitors who travel to Longwood by all modes. While many of our staff and faculty travel to the Longwood area by train, bus, bike, and foot, our patients who are often weakened by treatment need to travel by car or transport vehicle. For these reasons, we are very supportive of your work to date in conducting a separate study of Longwood to carefully evaluate the complex nature and needs of transportation in our neighborhood that will inform the final outcomes of the redesign. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. So uh, Jay Wilberforce will be next and in the queue is Nicholas Johnson. So uh, Shana, can you unmute Jay? Jay, you may need to unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, good. Okay, thank you. My name is actually James Williamson. I live in North Cambridge. I've lived in Cambridge for 50 years. I've lived in North Cambridge for 15. I've been a staunch public trans transportation advocate for years. And I'm getting to the point where I'm, I'm just so disillusioned, disenchanted, it's hard for me to continue to believe that it, 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 it actually can make a difference. And I just, I'm sorry to, that it seems to be heading that way. Um, I wanna focus on the 83, living in North Cambridge, uh, the area where I live along Ringe Avenue, Elway Brook Parkway is the heaviest concentration of low income people living in affordable housing of any census tract in all of Cambridge by more than double. And instead of enhancing the eight, the only service is other than walking dangerous and dangerous walk to the T, which of course service is already being cut in and unreliable. Um, the only service is the 83 bus, which on Sundays runs every 55 minutes, just to give an example. Instead of improving the 83 to serve the, the low income people, I was president of the tenant council at Jefferson Park. And of course there are the towers and they're adding additional uh, low income housing in this area. Instead of enhancing service on the 83 by extending the route over the bridge uh, that's difficult for people to traverse to the Fresh Pond Mall so that can, people can actually do some shopping. It's pretty much of a food desert uh, along Ringe Ave. Um, instead of extending service over the bridge to the Fresh Pond Mall, which would be a great uh, 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 improvement for people who live in this area, what, the t what you're proposing is actually to cut the, the 83 service to Central Square. People in this area have strong ties to Central Square and vice versa. And what you're proposing instead is to have the 83 go to Kendall. People would have to, if they're going to Central, would have to get off the bus, go down two long flights of escalators at Just Porter Square, and then your two minute warning. Yeah, okay. And any, it, 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 what, what it's clear to me and to other people in Cambridge is the whole, what you're doing, you're saying you're doing this for poor people, but what you're really doing is centering Kendall Square and the Longwood Medical Area. And I don't see the data to support your argument that this is helping poor people. So I'd say, keep the 83, improve it uh, by sending it to Fresh Pond Mall and keep it going to Central Square. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Um, I see Nicholas Johnston is next, and in the queue after Nicholas will be Charles Bonnier. Uh, 
Shana, can you unmute Nicholas, please? Hi there. Hi. Um, I'm, I'm a uh, resident of the Medford area, I guess, uh, West Medford specifically. I, uh, I don't have a car and I'm very unlikely to be able to afford one in the, in the, in the future, at least in the near future. Uh, so I'm completely reliant on, um, on public transportation in the area. Um, so like a few other people have commented, I'm, uh, I'm quite worried about the removal of the 80 mile. Um, it's, uh, it's one of the, one of the main ways that I'm able to, to get around my community and area and, um, it's loss will be, will make a lot of things just a lot harder to get to for me. Um, additionally, uh, this is quite specific, but, um, the, um, the 94 stop, uh, of Boston Avenue at high street. Um, is the stop I use to commute to my job, um, and that stop is uh, it's going away. So that kind of just straight up lengthens my commute, uh, which is sort of just you know a lower quality of life thing. Um, so for me, I, I don't have a good view of the larger picture. But for me and in my own community, um, I I'm really just losing access to services. Um, as far as I know, I, I haven't seen anything coming to the area. So I'm, I'm quite concerned as, as somebody without a car that I'm just going to not be able to get to the places I used to get to. Um, and I'm hoping that there will be some room to look at that and maybe the, um, restore sort of those services. Uh, thank you. Sorry, I lost my unmute button. Um, thank you for your comments. Um, I would like to, I know Charles, I said Charles was next, but actually Amber McMahon was next. I think she had lowered her hand early and I lost her in my queue. So Amber, if you are ready, we can turn to you now. My apologies. Hi. Hi, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no worries. Um, Thank you, Reagan, for listening to me once again. Um, I was a part of the meeting on 622. Um, as you know, we've sent many letters of concern. We have to date not heard back. We were told we would be circled back around. We're direct to Butters on 93 Pleasant Street to the 54 bus line. And we're concerned about the public safety concerns as well as personal concerns. Um, and also the frequency of the bus stopping um, in those early morning hours, um, every 15 minutes, seven days per week, as the proposed new bus stop will be directly in front of our house. Uh, and I just feel as though, you know, we sent many letters of concern. Um, and to date, we've been told we'd be getting back, getting back to, and no one has gotten back to us. So I'm not sure if that will happen or if we should send yet another letter to Victoria. Um, but it seems as though you guys are trying to take all the comments and feedback. Um, we would just like to hear back from you all since we are directly affected by this relocation if it happens in front of our private home um, with the traffic and public safety concerns and personal safety concerns. Thank you, Amber. Um, I appreciate that. Um, I, I will note that we will definitely get back to you. Um, as you can imagine, I think there's been a tremendous volume of comments, um, but um, please uh, definitely you have the email address, but we will we will be in touch. And we've Doug is nodding, I think, at me that we've noted all of this down, and we will make sure that we circle back. So our apologies for the delay. So um, next, uh, we're going to go to Charles Bonnier, and with uh, in the queue will be Bill Kreiber. So uh, Shana, can you unmute Charles, please? Hello. Hello. Uh, my name is Charles Beeney. I live in Cambridge, in West Cambridge. 
Uh, I am a writer on the 75, 74, and 78 routes, and I am strongly opposed to the plan to cut service to my neighborhood. This is a major drastic cut. Um, basically, service is going to be cut from every 15 minutes to the neighborhood as a whole to every half hour. Uh, some areas, the area of Concord Avenue between Walden Street and the Belmont Line, is going to be cut from every 15 minutes to once an hour. If you look on your proposed map, there is a big cap in bus service in the Fresh Pond area. We are too far to walk to any of the other the subway stations or any of the other bus services. I've lived in this neighborhood for over 40 years. We have not had a car for many of those years. We do not have a car now. Um, if you cut these services, uh, we have no choice but either to purchase a car or maybe if you find a place to live elsewhere, um, it's just you have ser improving services elsewhere, but if you don't have bus services in my neighborhood, I can't get to the T, period. Uh, this is a drastic cut and I am opposed to it. The one other thing I would say is you say you want to simplify the um, route structure by eliminating uh, alternate routes such as the 74. I think that that is simply an excuse for a cut to get rid of the 74. The fact that we have service in uh, both Concord Avenue and Huron Avenue, that's pretty easily understood. Uh, eliminating half of that service, you, that's what you're doing, eliminating half of the service. I would say that the recent the printed and online timetables for are very confusing. Maybe you're trying to make the timetables confusing. So, so Charles, Charles, I will, do you want to give you a two minute warning if you could wrap up your remarks? So basically I do not want to, I want to see the existing service on the 75 remain. I do not want to see any cuts at all on the 74 or any cuts at all on the 78. Thank you. Thank you for your comments and my apologies for the mispronunciation of your name. Um, so uh, next we're going to have Bill Kreiber and in the queue is Liam Cook. So Shana, can you unmute Bill, please? Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, first, thank you for your thoughtful sessions on uh, allowing public comments and for staging the changes over five years. I think that that's really important that you don't make just like a lot of changes at once. I also live in the West Medford area. Um, and so the 94 and the 80 are the main transits we used from West Medford to Tufts, the new Green Line extension that's going to be eventually at Tufts and Davis Square. So if you eliminate the 80, not only can't we go further than that, but it means really one third the existing service because the 80 runs about twice as often as the 94. And what you'll do is you'll make it so that we can only go from um, West Medford to either Tufts or Davis Square um, every 45 minutes. So we have to wait a while. Now that's not just a pr problem for residents. It's also a problem for the commuter rail riders because there's a commuter rail at West Medford which brings people from out of town like Lowell and the other cities and they might want to come into, um, I don't know, I don't know the, the, the statistics on this one. In addition, if you cut the 80, the 80 and the 95 travel to Arlington and eliminating the 80 will cut service to Arlington in half. Um, so those are the two, the, the, the things that I wanted to focus on. Oh, also, by the way, you're cutting the 96, which, uh, which is one of the ways in which we use the 80 to get to Davis Square if, if we're not on a 94. Um, you're not cutting the 96, you're just changing its route and it wouldn't be useful the way it, uh, it has been. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much for your comments. Um, I also do want to make sure everyone knows that we are seeing all of the comments that people are posting. Thank you for the really thoughtful comments, the written comments that we're receiving. I know there's some concern. They're not all sort of published publicly, um, only the ones that um, a specific question that we've answered, do you see? But rest assured that if you have posted a comment, um, we do see it. Um, so I wanna thank everyone for the, for the very thoughtful remarks. Um, 
So I have uh, up next will be Liam Cook and in the queue is Melinda Green. So Shana, can you unmute Liam, please? Good evening, everyone. My name is Liam and I also live in Medford in the Hillside neighborhood. I am disabled. I have a difficulty walking long distances and all buses in my neighborhood are about to be cut with the 96 and 94 being rerouted away from my neighborhood and the 80 being cut entirely. I am concerned that there will be no bus connections to the new College Ave stop, which would be the way that I'd be keeping myself employed. I am not able to walk 20 minutes to that station, particularly in inclement weather, but it's also with hills due to my foot condition. Are we going to be increasing access to the ride and ride services to make up for these sorts of cuts and the way they will disproportionately affect the elderly and the disabled? Uh, Doug, I don't know if you want to respond to that question. All I can say at this time is that none of the proposals in the bus network redesign are set in stone. We are going to make changes to the network based on all the public comments that we've received. Um, after we take in those comments, make changes to the network, we'll then be conducting a couple different equity analyses um, and then go from there. So I can't respond to your question directly about any potential changes to the ride service. Um, we'll know more once the network has been finalized. Um, but thank you for your feedback, Liam. Much appreciated tonight. Um, so next, um, we're going to have Melinda Green, and in the queue is Clark Frazier. So, uh, Shana, can you unmute Melinda? Hi. My name is Melinda Green. I'm a now eight-year resident of Somerville's Union Square. I, um, since moving to the Boston area 22 years ago, I have not owned a car. Um, and while I do okay financially, I can't afford a car and nor do I want one. Um, I live here because I like being able to walk to things. I like being able to take blue bikes to things and conveniently take public transportation. Public transportation is something I firmly believe in and I wish more people used it. When people complain about the tea, I, you know, with a grain of salt, but um, I, um, I, I, these proposed changes, um, I, I am shocked at the ones, and these I speak really only to the ones that um, impact Somerville, Charlestown area, um, mainly Union Square. Um, I frankly, the re, I, I'm, I understand we have the Union Square T, the GLX and the Union Square T stop now. Um, and along with that, we have, I have that I see from my bedroom window every night, some monstro, you know, another monstrosity that looks like, you know, seaport light is going up near my house with apartments or condos that I cannot afford as can neither much, much of my other neighbors um, who rent in this community. Um, I, I feel like these changes were frankly designed by um, our new mayor, girl boss, Katiana Ballantyne and Elon Musk. They totally ignore the needs of working class people, of seniors, of anyone that has to take Somerville Ave, has to get, has mobility issues, has to get from Davis Square to Union Square. Um, the, you know, the lack of the 86, which I always use to get into, I mean, that's basically how to get into Brighton. That's the most direct way. And when I look at this new proposed map, what is that doing? You know, is there is there going to be some dream of some open green space in Union Square because it's just going to be cars? Um, so just I don't want to give you the two minute warning. Sure. I just don't see how this it infuriates me. Um, I don't see how this helps people. I don't see how this helps. I live by many elderly people. Um, I go to the grocery store with them. Market basket. Mark. Like, how are people supposed to get to Market Basket? Um, I mean, getting in the winter, how are people supposed, supposed to ride bikes so, in the winter? Um, I mean, I could go on and on, but I just, I just, I please don't touch for every reasons for how it is exclude. I, I think the changes to Somerville make it exclusive and are the most inequitable that I've seen. Um, and that's really just all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you for your comments, Melinda. Um, 
So uh, Clark Frazier is next, and I see Marie Sacariccio after Clark. Uh, so Shana, can you unmute Clark? Uh, Clark Frazier here. Uh, Reagan, you're almost inaudible. Uh, I live in Hingham, and the bus services are almost totally unusable to me. Uh, I think MBTA's weakest link is transfers, particularly at Quincy. Also, I'm on the Route 714. Uh, it should really, every trip should stop at Nantasket Junction, uh, connect with commuter rail. Uh, Growth along the South Shore has been ignored. The growth along Route 3, where medical and everything else is, had no bus routes. Also, uh, some of the bus routes end at places where there's no sidewalks. I asked that the 222 be extended to Derby Street. I think that the Hingham bus should be extended to Nantasket, particularly in the summer. Uh, without, we have to have some kind of growth plan. I lived in Seattle area for a while and they had all kinds of suburban bus growth. And we've had none. In fact, we don't even have buses where there used to be streetcars. So I think that they have to do a lot more in the suburban area because there's no way in this area to be, be transit dependent. And I really cannot use the 220 bus unless I have reliable uh, red line and reliable and predictable red line connections, which means the red line needs to run on a, like a 15 minute headway, not a 13 or 16. And you know, I could go on and on. I've already commented, but I really think that uh, South Shore is being shortchanged in this. Thank you. Thank you, Clark. Appreciate your comments. Um, Marie is next, and then um, I see Wig uh, via phone. So Marie. Good evening. Uh, this is Marie Sococcio. I'm a lifelong resident of East Cambridge. Um, and I have to applaud the Somerville residents who uh, participated this evening because I'm totally uh, in agreement with their criticisms. Um, bad enough, we lost Leechmere to across the artery and up 45 steps with no uh, safe accommodation for us. But now the plan seems to be to um, do away with bus lines 80, 87, and 88. Um, East Cambridge is really uh, intimately involved with uh, East Somerville and a lot of the facilities in Somerville. Our, this is the highest concentration of seniors and disabled in the city. Most of our seniors go to Cambridge Health Alliance. A lot of their uh, doctors are offsite. They're in Somerville or they're up in Porter Square. Um, so, you know, changing your route so that all we essentially have is the 69 uh, really, really excludes an awful lot of elderly and disabled. Um, I noticed that there was a sign on Cambridge Street for the 69 uh, confirming and, and encouraging people that they could participate, but don't worry, the 69 is intact. But I didn't see any any flyers or any posters about the 80, 87, and 88. One of my neighbors is blind. During this heat wave, she made her own flyers. She went to the Leachmere station. She gave out hundreds of flyers to notify people. They totally were unaware of this. So I would listen to the people in Somerville and listen to people who've already written in uh, about East Cambridge. Having the 69 doesn't do much for us. Having the bus from uh, North Point to Kendall Square benefits a very young, able-bodied uh, clientele. If this and is about equity, and supposedly it was, you're not being equitable. Thank you, Marie. I appreciate your comments tonight. Uh, Shana, can you... Uh, so next is Wig uh, via phone, um, and on in the queue is Heather Hoffman. Um, I do want to thank, before we turn to Wig, I want to thank everyone for their patience tonight. Um, there's a lot of people with comments and a long queue. Um, someone has asked in the chat how late we're going. I know it was scheduled to go till 8, but I believe, Doug, we're going to stay past 8 to try to get through all the verbal comments that we can tonight. 
Um, so, Wig, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, Shana, can you? Oh, that's him? fine. Um, thank you, Wig, Wig Zaymore from Somerville. Um, thank you for all, all your work and, and doing these meetings. Uh, nice to hear from non Somervillians like Mella and James and, and so many people from Somerville and East Cambridge. Um, <clears throat> I did um, uh, hand, hand in an idea for a bus circulator in Somerville, which I'm going to refine a little bit, but just so folks know, the circulator would hit two orange line stations, two red line stations, three green line stations, Mystic Housing, Foss, and Market Basket, among other things. Um, next, um, I want to talk about data in, instead of roots. Um, you've obviously done a lot of data collection and, and assessment, and I'm wondering a couple of things about the data whether it could be made available to people able to, to use the data in, in a separate set so they could compare it with census, um, whether it could be used to do origin destination calculations for people like those on the phone today, like how, you know, how, how fast does it take me to get from here to here now versus the proposed bus network redesign, and thirdly, whether it could be used for uh, further analysis and visualization and thinking about some subgroups like environmental justice or seniors. Uh, that's really the, my comment. I, I also want uh, my sense is the deadline for this um, period of comment is about a week off. Can you just um, confirm when, when the deadline for comments is? Thanks so much. Thanks, Wig. I can confirm that the deadline is July 31st, which is this Sunday. Um, and actually, I'm realizing, uh, Terry, can you go to the next slide? Okay, so that has our email address and uh, the project website there. Apologies if that has not been on screen. Okay, so- um, Before we go to the next question, Wig, I just wanna answer your okay. question about data sharing. Um, we are launching a project page that discusses our methodology um, and the data that we use to develop the draft network map. Um, so that will be available shortly. Um, and we'll be sure to share a link to that uh, with folks in our email distribution once it's live. Um, we've also created a couple different dashboards that allow folks to um, see some of the differences with the new network. And then there is also a trip planning tool um, that we've had available during the public comment period um, that we that would allow folks to see what the new trip would look like compared to their old trip um, using the new network. So we are making um, as much of that information available as we possibly can. Uh, for the location-based services data that we used, um, there are some contract issues with sharing that data um, broadly. So we're doing our best to share what we are um, allowed to share under that contract and make as much of it as available and transparent to folks as we can. Thank you, Doug. Um, so Heather is next, uh, and then following Heather will be Tom Yardley. So Shana, can you unmute Heather? Hello, Heather Hoffman. I live in East Cambridge. Uh, few blocks from Marie. And a lot of what I have said before and was thinking about saying tonight has already been said by other people. So I'd like to first introduce something that I've heard nothing about. And that is the need that people have to get to government offices, like courts. As it stands now, courts are really hard to get to in Middlesex County if you don't have a car. Um, you, the closest bus service that I know of to the Middlesex Probate Court is a mile away. Um, the, and it is not easy to get to the Superior Court. I don't know about um, the various district courts because I haven't, uh, needed to go there. But that's something to consider. There are people get called to jury duty and if they don't have a car, they're screwed uh, because jury duty tries to assign people to places not near where they live. 
Um, and this matters a whole lot to people. People need to get to the probate court, for example, for lots of things. And um, a lot of them don't have a lot of money and they don't have cars. Um, and speaking of people with not a lot of money, there is just a general theme that I don't think that people who live in public housing are well served. East Cambridge has three elderly and disabled housing uh, buildings. And uh, James talked about the many, many buildings out at the end of Ring Jav. And you've gotten so, a letter Heather, from- Heather, I'm gonna ask okay. you to make your closing comments, sure. please. Yes. Um, the up. point is that people living in public housing, especially need public transit and you're okay. taking it away and you shouldn't. Thanks. Thank, thank you, Heather. Um, I do want to note right now, there's been some questions about this meeting tonight versus the meeting on Thursday. And if there's overlap, Doug, correct me if I'm wrong, but it is the same presentation we will be giving on Thursday night and we will be listening to comments. So if you provide your comments tonight, um, there is no need to come a second time. You're welcome to come Thursday as well, but there's no need to come to both. Um, I hope that answers that comment. Um, and some folks are asking about the best way to leave comments beyond this forum. And that would be, I think, through our online feedback form where you can leave comments both by neighborhood and by route specifically. And that's mbta.com forward slash BNRD feedback. Okay, so uh, Tom Yardley is next and in the queue is Joel um, Sudhall. And Shana, can you unmute Tom? Hi, uh, can everyone hear me? Yes, Tom. Uh, thank you, Regan. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Melissa. Um, I'm Tom Yardley. I'm Vice President for Area Planning and Development at the Longwood Collective, formerly uh, MASCO. Um, we represent uh, Longwood institutions. We employ 68,000 people, educate 20, 27,000 students, and provide care for 2.8 million patients each year. Um, we are uh, supportive of the bus network redesign, and we have participated in the task force that led to these recommendations. Um, there's new connections, more frequency and service, and this is a transformation as the bus, of the bus network as we know it today. And I also want to thank uh, MassDOT and the MBTA team for commissioning a study to carefully consider bus routing through Longwood. Um, the, we have unique and complex transportation needs in Longwood, uh, competing for limited road space. Um, half of our employees coming to Longwood rely on public transit to get here, but over 90% of patients travel by car uh, for reasons that uh, Olivia Mullen already uh, illustrated this evening in her testimony. Um, we're going to provide more detailed written comments, and I want to be respectful of uh, the ability for others to give testimony tonight, but we have a few uh, initial comments that we will provide more detail on. Um, the extension of single seat service from significantly further away neighborhoods like the Seaport and Mataban to Longwood is a great opportunity to reduce drive alone trips to our neighborhood. Um, however, shorter routes typically have greater peak hour re reliability, uh, allowing bus riders to get to their de destinations on time at all times. So we encourage the MBTA to consider shortening routes that are very long right now with the current map. Um, and also, in our experience, the Longwood area is more of a destination, like a downtown, rather than a pass-through. We're home to four major healthcare institutions. So, Tom, that serve Tom I'm going to ask you to uh, wrap up your remarks, yeah. please. All right, Regan, I, I'm right there. Patients per day. And um, so we encourage the MBTA to route buses to and from the Long Longwood uh, area to reflect this point. Um, so I, I want to thank uh, you all for... Um, the efforts on redesign, redesigning the bus map, and we look forward to providing more input. Um, and and uh, thank you for the opportunity to comment. Thank you so much, Tom. Um, so Joel is next, and following Joel will be 
Juanita Gibson. So Shana, can you unmute Joel, please? All right, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Joel Southall. I live in Arlington. Um, I use the MBTA probably three to four days a week. Um, I'd like to know my entire job, my, my day job, is to solicit feedback from the public on big projects uh, and to do it in an equitable way. So I'm particularly sensitive to the concept of needing to, de to, to uh, design a big system like this holistically and equitably, something I think about a lot. And so I, I appreciate that that's um, a, a part of this effort. Um, I am here to speak for the 67 bus, um, which has been eliminated from the proposed map. Um, one of the reasons that I moved to Arlington um, is because of the access to public transit and specifically the 67 bus. Um, eliminating the 67 bus would um, almost triple my commute time to Alewife, which I then head into Boston from. Um, so take, uh, take the, the first part of my trip and, and almost triple it. Um, and I'm, I'm also very concerned that eliminating the bus would make people um, just far less likely to take public transportation in general. It would make it harder for people in this part of Arlington without access to cars to get around. It would make it probably in being Arlington a lot more likely that people with access to cars will just drive instead of taking public transportation. Um, and so I'd ask you to uh, restore the 67 bus to the service map and also quickly wrapping up, just note that, you know, if it were to be eliminated, in addition to using the MBTA less, I would probably go downtown a day or two less a week. I'm fortunate to be able to work remotely. And if I do that, I'm probably gonna spend 10 bucks a day less on lunch and 15 bucks a day less on a couple of beers after work. And so there's a lot of impacts uh, beyond just the ridership that, um, that go into this. So I'd ask you to not eliminate the 67 bus. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. So Juanita is next and Evan Foss is in the queue. So uh, Juanita. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, I'm Juanita Gibson. I am a staff attorney at Conservation Law Foundation. And first of all, we just wanna congratulate the MBTA for this once in a generation proposed redesign. We understand that the transit system is very complex and connected, just like our communities, and that any approach to redesign is full of both opportunities and challenges. Um, but with that said, this testimony is intended to highlight a few issues that have come to light during this public commenting period. Um, first, we want to request that the public commenting period be extended by three weeks from July 31st to August 21st. Um, throughout the summer 2022 public meetings, we've encountered many people who were unaware of the redesign or who only recently learned of it, many of whom are members of or represent transit dependent populations. Additionally, the MBTA staff first stated that they would welcome comments throughout the summer. Then at some point in the first week of July, the MBTA announced a deadline of July 31st. And we believe a longer comment period will allow more riders to learn about the proposal and then provide meaningful feedback. In addition, we believe that there remain many unanswered questions raised um, during this period that arose related to bus electrification, reaching Massachusetts decarbonization goals, and a system-wide low-income fare, which are three key targets that are related to this bus network redesign. If the Commonwealth will meet our climate mandates and be aligned with the recently released Clean Energy and Climate Plan for 2025 and 2030, then the bus network redesign should include alignment with a bus electrification plan with specific procurement deadlines. And I'll just say three final points um, that we believe are really essential to this process. The first being connectivity and that proposed route changes should not impede a community's ability to access social services, economic opportunities, or each other. The second being public engagement, which is an opportunity, not just an obligation. And we urge the MBTA to continually evaluate its public engagement processes to better process feedback from riders, municipalities, and other advocates. And so MBTA, Juanita, I will ask you to uh, wrap up your remarks, please, right the two sure. minutes. Finally, I'll just say that um, for equity that we must center um, that by prioritizing high frequency service, conducting meaningful outreach and completing a service equity analysis before the MBTA Board of Directors reviews and approves the final service proposal. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to comment. Thank you for your comments. So we have uh, Evan Foss is next and um, in the queue is Martha uh, Padron. So uh, Shana, can you unmute Evan, please? 
Evan, it looks like you're using an older version of Zoom, so I'm going to need to promote you to a panelist and then you should be able to unmute. Evan, you should be able to unmute. All right, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. All right, uh, I wanna echo Timothy Alher's uh, comments earlier. As a fellow Newton resident, um, I see his observations as sound. I also wanna echo Mella Miles' comments. Um, this has been a more than a hundred year time span between the last time the bus network was touched. Uh, it seems like a bit of an error, only giving these folks two minutes a piece to comment. I also find it rather problematic that the uh, written public comments are not actually accessible after the meeting via any other means than FOIA with the exception of the ones that are um, replied to. Uh, I also wanna point out that we recently had a bus fire in Connecticut. There was an XE40. This is the same type of battery bus that the T is buying 40 of to stick in Cambridge. And this battery powered bus melted to the ground. Um, clearly you need to reconsider the phase out of trolley buses if your intention is to actually go carbon neutral on any reasonable time scale. I hope that the outlined plan is compatible with that. Uh, I also find it odd considering the overwhelming overload of some of the more busy bus lines that already exist that there is nowhere in this plan for any of these lines to be converted to rapid transit of some sort. Thank you. Sorry, I lost my mute button. Thank you for your comments. Um, okay, uh, let me go. So we have Martha next, and then following Martha is Paula Sterite. So um, Shana, can you unmute Martha? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Great. Yeah, um, I'm Martha Podron. I'm a resident, long time, 35 year resident of East Somerville um, and a senior. And um, I want to say I do appreciate the redesign of the MBTA, but I think it's really wrong footed, um, certainly as it concerns Somerville bus service. And I want to echo the comments of Willie Burnley. Um, Adam Sweeting and many others in that the coverage to East uh, Somerville, Somerville in general and East Cambridge is, you know, woefully lacking in this design. Um, I get around on the 80, the 87, the 88 and the 86. And um, the thought that these will be eliminated only makes me need to use a car more. That's exactly the opposite of what the MBTA should be trying to do. And I think, I, I have to say, I vehemently oppose the elimination of these bus routes. Whether or not there is a Green Line extension, the coverage of the Green Line extension does not overlap with all of the coverage of these buses. And if you are a senior or you're disabled or it's 100 degrees out, you want to have the shortest possible walk, whether it's during very hot days, or whether it's during icy days, it makes a lot of difference to quality of life. And um, considering the density of East Somerville and the build out that's currently happening in East Somerville and uh, East Cambridge, I think it's really a, a, a mistake to be cutting this kind of service. I vehemently oppose the cutting of these bus routes. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. Um, I do want to, I, f I forgot after the, our last speaker, I did want to note that um, in addition to the meeting recordings being posted online, we will be posting the, the caption files on and on Thursday, the transcript of the meeting, as well as um, the submitted comments um, after the meetings. Um, so, 
just to assure everyone that just because they're not visible in this format does not mean they will not be part of the meeting record for these meetings. Um, so Paula will be next and following Paula will be Barrett Steinberg. So Shana, can you please unmute Paula? Hi, uh, good evening. Uh, thanks for holding the meeting. Um, I'll be quick. Um, I'm really concerned that you're redirecting the services, the new services for the new developments, which will be for high rise and the higher end and wealthier uh, people coming to the area while um, eliminating or reducing services for the existing folks who are mostly on the, the uh, in many cases, uh, minorities um, and on the low end of the service spectrum who are really dependent on getting to this to work shopping by by using the buses uh, routes using getting around town um, I, I'm concerned that uh, there's lack of representation from the Everett Sun and at the first meeting that I was on I had requested or suggested that the T of the Department of Transportation actually come to Everett, meet with the community leaders of specific uh, groups like One Everett, La Comunidad, the Haitian community, because this this form is not going to work for the the working people of Everett. To be honest with you, like I said, if you look at the people who are on it, I'm assuming that they're all, uh, you know, professional uh, members. Where in in Everett, we're basically a very poor city, so I think. You miss, this is a miss, this is a, an up, but this isn't the forum for these folks. Um, I think um, you, the similar to what some other folks have said, most of the redesign is is to get people out of the city, but not around the city. And people need to get to the library, to doctors' offices, to the shopping centers, and you're basically just taking them from one point to Boston. Who I'm not sure whoever told anyone. People on the buses want to go to Linfield. I don't know, um, but like you're eliminating 97, where people are going to have to Paula, walk. Paula, I'm going to ask you to wrap up your remarks. We've hit the two minute mark. Sorry. I just, it's not, I, I know you've tried very hard, but I'm not sure what data you're using. But you're definitely missing the boat. And if you listen to the people on this call, it's obvious that there's a disconnect on what the T is seeing and what people need. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. I appreciate your comments. And again, I know um, I know two minutes does not seem like a long time, so I really do encourage you to either people can leave feedback either on the online form or definitely written comments um, in this Q and A box here as well. And um, again, thanks to everyone who has been submitting comments throughout the meeting. So Barrett is next, um, and in the queue will be Julian Wong. So Shana, can you please unmute Barrett? Oh, there we go. There we go. Uh, sorry about that. Hi, I'm a resident of West Somerville and uh, Teal Square near Davis. Uh, I wanted to also echo a lot of the comments earlier uh, around the removal of the 87 and 88. Um, I use it every day to commute and to work in Union Square. And I think it'd be a terrible design not to connect directly uh, two of the more popular squares in Somerville, uh, Davis and Union in particular. Um, in addition, I just think it'd be uh, crazy to provide such difficult access from West Somerville to the new Green Line stops uh, and also to the high school, as mentioned. Uh, and it will just, uh, for me, it would encourage uh, me to use my car, which we're fortunate enough to have, and just add to the general amount of traffic. I would much prefer to use public transportation as much as possible. Uh, but it just would make things too difficult for me and, and plenty of other people in our neighborhood. Uh, so I'll just um, really echo all of the earlier comments and uh, encourage you to keep those two routes. Thank you. Thank you, Barrett. Um, Julian Wong is next um, and in the queue would be Charles Hines. So Shana, can you unmute Julian, please? Julian, it looks like you're using an older version of Zoom. So I will promote you up to a panelist in order to speak. Julian, you should be able to speak now. 
very much and uh, good evening. Thank you for holding this uh, meeting as well as all the other ones. Uh, I think I'll keep this as short as I can. Uh, in a bus network system serving the city as Julian, can I interrupt you for a minute? Do you mind speaking a little bit louder? There's some background noise. It's a little hard. To I hear apologize. <laughs> this is this was the only place I could uh, find that quickly to Thank sit you. down and talk. Um, yeah, so in a city like Boston, where you have varying densities all around uh, the metro area. You really need a mix of arterial cross towns and uh, the circular route that serve the neighborhoods. And I really feel like this uh, BBP really uh, drove home just maximizing the uh, drivers and operational efficiency there as opposed to doing a holistic treatment. I really wish that there were more aspects to T service that were included in this redesign, including uh, fare tariff schemes, as well as regional rail uh, in terms of how that could have played. I definitely think, you know, the Somerville uh, concerns are, are valid. I really wish there was more, there was something that could be done about, you know, doing something to Cedar Street or Central Avenue. Uh, so yeah, it, for me, it's just, uh, there, there's a lot I could think of. But really, um, it's just a lack of whole, you know, I know where the T is at. I know where this project is, you know, has its limits and where it has to focus on. But if it were larger, then it, 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 it should have been larger. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Thank you so much. I appreciate your comments. Um, so. Charles will be next and Crystal H is in the queue. So Shana, can you unmute Charles, please? All right, uh, my name is Chuck Hines. I'm the current president of the East Cambridge Planning Team, which is the Neighborhood Association of East Cambridge. Uh, when it was announced that the 80, 80 87 and 88 buses were, were being eliminated, we, I literally had a, heard an outcry from our senior community that, that rely on those buses uh, extensively. We're doing things like uh, going food shopping, like at Market Basket, going to Somerville Hospital, going to doctor's appointments. There's a lot of points in Somerville that our seniors in East Cambridge need. Uh, I mean, we have three major uh, senior centers here, senior uh, housing centers, Mills River, Truman Apartments, Putman Apartments, which has hundreds and hundreds of seniors. And they, they all rely on these buses. Uh, I mean, some people even use these to uh, go, go to houses of worship. Uh, we'll, we submitted a letter to uh, Victoria Ireton, the MBTA, uh, detailing a lot of this with a two-page letter, uh, going through the uh, lack of substitution, the problems with the methodology on counting on these buses, and going over the equity disparity, because uh, we're losing a lot of uh, important service here for our seniors. So I know I know there's a lot of people waiting, so I'll just keep my comments to, to short. I know a lot of people have already repeated issues about the 80, 87, 88 on this call already, and I urge the MBTA to, to consider keeping those buses. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. Appreciate your comments. Um, Crystal H will be next, and in the queue is Emily Lauka. Um, Shana, can you please unmute Crystal? Hi, uh, my name is Crystal Huff. I live in Somerville and I want to say first that I agree with you when you say in your presentation that it's important to prioritize equity for our marginalized neighbors in public transit planning. That goal is unfortunately not what I see in the plans presented by the MBTA, at least in terms of impact on riders in Somerville who depend on these buses. I'm particularly concerned with the impact on Somerville's poorer households and disabled residents. As we face more impacts of climate change, uh, similar to what another commenter mentioned, I'm very concerned with the lack of commensurate increases in T service. Public transit is an important way to have lower fossil fuel use in the city and we need that. In order to be effective as a transit option, trains and buses need to be affordable and they need to be frequent and they need to be dependable, regardless of how much ridership you currently have. 
free would be even better than affordable, frankly, and I would be happy, I would be thrilled to pay more in taxes to provide free public transit to all. Um, free buses are faster because you don't have to worry about payment when loading onto the bus. You have twice the options for getting people onto the bus in terms of the doors available. You don't have incidents over passengers arguing with a driver about payment. But at any rate, um, others have spoken to the more specific concerns about individual bus lines. I want to say in an overarching comment that I believe all bus lines should be increased in frequency, not decreased please increase the MBTA services on all fronts and actually prioritize those marginalized and in needs of the T buses, those with disabilities who need to get around in our cities, those who are poor and need the access. Thank you. Thank you, Crystal. Um, Emily is next and I believe Larry um, Feig is, on, is in the queue. So Shana, can you unmute Emily, please? Emily, it looks like you're using an older version of Zoom, so I will promote you to a panelist in order to speak. Emily, you should be able to speak. Hi, I'm Emily Lalka. I live in Somerville's Winter Hill near the 89, 101, and 80 bus routes. We chose this, chose this neighborhood because of the bus accessibility. I don't drive. I walk or take public transit most places with my three kids. Currently, the 101 runs every 15 minutes. Combined with the 89, that's a high frequency to Sullivan. Changing the 101 to every 10 minutes, but eliminating the 89 and one seat rides to Davis is not giving us more service. I rely on the 89 to get to Powder House and Davis Square. It's not simple for anyone if they have to change buses take twice as long and go a town out of their way to travel within their own city. That's a system that is not designed for folks who live here to use it. For those not directly affected by this proposal, they'll be indirectly affected. The lifeguard at Lotta Brothers Pool, my kids' summer school staff, our after-school community coordinator, all of their commutes to their jobs in Somerville become much more difficult in the redesign proposal. Eliminating our bus routes makes our buses spread very far apart. It pushes them mostly to the edges of Somerville, leaving a difficult walking distance with steep hills. Only the 90 would remain through the middle of town, running only every 30 minutes or better by City Hall, our main library, and the high school. That's not enough service. Our topography was not accounted for. These are long walks and steep hills. I ask you to keep the 89, and please consider a creative solution for a north-south connection from Broadway to Somerville Avenue to help the mobility and interconnectedness in Somerville and to connect the new Green Line stations to the proposed T101 and T39, T39 routes. Thank you. Thank you very much for your com comments. And I've lost video up there. Um, so Larry uh, is on, is next, and um, in the queue is Quinn Vanderbeck. Um, Shana, can you please unmute Larry? I have a kind of a general question and then a, a more specific one. Um, the general question is if um, this is a long term project. Um, why is it happening now in the middle of the pandemic when you can't really predict who's going to be riding which bus? That's the, what, shouldn't we wait until the, um, the ridership is more clear? For example, you're cutting out the 505 bus, uh, combining it with another bus that was very crowded before the pandemic and the ridership is going up. And so um, if it gets in any more and combining with another bus, it's going to be unusable. And the more specific question is, um, again, a long-term project Many of you know that you must know that there's a large development project going on at Riverside T Station, housing project. The purpose of which was to try to make it a more of a transportation hub. Um, previously, there was a 500 bus that took many commuters who drove to Riverside and took that bus downtown because the Green Line is way too slow. Now there's going to be hundreds of more um, commuters because of the the new housing at Riverside. How come the reestablishing the 500 bus is not in the plan. So 
Doug, I don't know if you want to just address quickly like the broader planning uh, part of the study and the timing sure. of it of the project. Yep, I can't comment specifically on the 500 bus, but I will say that we used um, our analysis looked at all travel in the region, not just bus ridership. Um, and while we go through the phases of implementation, we will continue to evaluate uh, travel patterns as they evolve over time. So uh, this is really a, an iterative and an ongoing effort. Great, thank you so much. Um, so we will say that Quinn is going to be next and in the queue is Timothy Hutama. Um, so uh, Shana, can you unmute Quinn, please? Hi, can you hear me? Hmm. Yes, we can. Oh, great. Okay, cool. Um, I'm a resident of Medford, of North Medford in the Fulton Heights neighborhood. The only bus that serves this neighborhood is the 100 since the 325 express bus has been eliminated. And the 100 on the proposal is going down to every 60 minutes up until 7 p.m. In my experience, 7 p.m. is not actually even late enough to be usable for a commute. Um, and I'm basing that on my pre-pandemic experience of commuting to and from the Longwood area. When I took the 325, I would somewhat frequently miss the last one at Haymarket, which was at 6.30 in order to get back to Medford. So if I couldn't make it to Haymarket at 6.30, then a 7 p.m. bus is not gonna be reliable. Because I wouldn't be able to rely on that bus, I would have to drive for part of my commute, or I could walk about a mile and a quarter to the nearest Orange Line station, which is kind of a lot, even in the best weather. Um, it would mean I would be spending almost an hour walking every day, um, and I can do that, um, but it's a lot, and in, inclement weather with the hills in the neighborhood, it's honestly really a bad idea. Um, so this proposal means that commuting to and from this neighborhood entirely via public transit is no longer a doable option. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Quinn. So I believe uh, Timothy is next um, and in the queue is Tom Lamar. Shana, can you unmute Timothy, please? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah. Hi, I'm Timothy Utama. I live in East Cambridge and for the, for the last year, and I'm moving to East Somerville next month. Primarily right now I use Route 1 and the CT2. So I've never owned a car and I've only ever used public transit, but this isn't my first experience with the bus network redesign. I've and This will be my third, in fact. I've lived in Kingston, Ontario and Toronto, Ontario, where this has been done, and um, where infrequent and closely spaced lines replace more frequent and further spaced lines. Generally, I support the bus network as it's presented. And I think a lot of thought and data went into this. Um, and I think overall it'll lead to increased ridership across the city. I'm especially appreciative of how the network takes and tries to take into account the new GLX extension and generally want to express my support of the removal of routes between the Khmer and the new Union and Square stop um, to free additional buses for other routes and just to improve service across the system. But I also disagree with certain aspects of the solution put forward, especially in Somerville, regarding the lack of north-south connections, um, especially the lack of GLX connections with the new Medford branch, and the disconnection of Sullivan to Porter and Davis. In general, I think that the current plan doesn't properly promote intermodal transfers and that the plan can be better improved to connect commuter rail and transfer stops uh, with the new GLX branch. Uh, generally, I also support the increase in service and accessibility with the seaport in the addition of the T7 and T9. I especially support the T7 because of the uh, interaction with the planned intermodal uh, route that Boston's putting forward between North and South Station and hope that the MBTA will continue to work with municipalities to implement more transit parity across the system. Um, I also wanted to express the opinion that though people feel trepidation over transfers, just from my experience, uh, with how other redesigns have gone, I generally have preferred transfers over more direct but longer routes. So I also um, just wanted to put that opinion out there. So I right. think Thank that's it. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Timothy. You. Okay, so we go to 
Tom Lamar, um, and then in the queue is Thomas Farrell. So Tom. Hi, uh, the previous commenter actually articulated a lot of uh, what I wanted to say, but um, hi, I'm a East Somerville resident. Uh, overall, I, I'll, I'll try to focus on some different areas. I, I uh, really appreciate the bus network overall. Uh, and I think the overall philosophy of concentrating uh, much more frequent service on fewer routes is exactly the right philosophy overall while maintaining coverage. Uh, a couple areas that I'm excited about, I'm really excited to see uh, some bus routes like along Broadway or Washington being consolidated where there's a lot of total bus service, but previously you would get two buses uh, a minute apart and then no buses for a long time. I'm really optimistic that the consolidation of the T101 uh, and T109 will uh, result in more reliable headways along Broadway and Washington here. Um, I'm also really excited for the proposed T7. Uh, that is basically my wife's commute, uh, where she relies on the MBTA and multiple transfers. And I'm really optimistic about the future of these uh, better crosstown routes. Uh, but I wanted to call out that some of these proposals uh, seem to implicitly really rely on municipalities building enough bus infrastructure that the bus can actually run on time. I wanted to encourage the MBTA to more explicitly call that out. Uh, their reliance on municipalities building enough bus lanes and signal priority for buses, uh, and perhaps more clearly state that they are willing and capable of running better bus services if municipalities give them enough bus priority, they can efficiently operate those bus services, uh, not let them get stuck in traffic behind private cars. Uh, I also wanted to uh, ask the MBTA to consider uh, trackless trolleys, uh, better uh, serving uh, communities by avoiding local emissions uh, and might be a way to avoid some issues on some of the steep hills in Somerville. Uh, finally, while I strongly support I the bus network overall, uh, and believe it's an improvement for my neighborhood of East Somerville, I wanted to echo some concerns of my friends and neighbors yeah. uh, in West Somerville who lose access to Union Square and in Winter Hill who have uh, worse access to Davis Square and the Red Line. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Um, okay, so uh, Tom Farrell is next with Allison Taylor in the queue. Hi there, my name is Tom Farrell. I've lived in Somerville since 1998 and I've lived in my current home for 13 years. I live near the intersection of Central Street and Avon Street. And from my desk right now, I can look out the window and see the stop where the 85 bus goes. Um, the 85 leaves from my home. I was convinced to move here because I was working in Kendall and it went directly to Kendall. It goes through Union Square and that is slated to be eliminated. So I won't be able to do that anymore. Um, I can hobble up the street to the 88 or the 90. The 88 um, goes to two different supermarkets, Davis Square, City Hall, the library, the Y, and Leachmere. That's being eliminated. I can take the, the 90 to Davis or Sullivan, which will become my only way to get into Boston. Um, I can hobble down the hill to the 87 and the 83, both of which are being eliminated. The 87 goes to the supermarket, Union Square, Davis, and Leachmere. Um, the 83 to Davis, Porter Square supermarket, and central are being limited. So no more supermarkets for me. So I'll have to have all of my shopping delivered at great expense. Um, also going up or down the hill is somewhat arduous to me because I am handicapped. Uh, coming up the hill from the bottom of the hill is extremely arduous to me. And I usually have to stop and rest several times on the way up, but all the buses down there are being eliminated anyway. Uh, I think that the proposed changes significantly impact the handicapped in the city, particularly in my neighborhood, and people in my neighborhood will have a hard time commuting by T. Even though I am 50, I've never owned a car because I want to keep a car off the street, but I may be forced to look into one or to move out of the city of Somerville entirely, which I do not want to do. Thank you very much. Those are my comments. Thank you for your comments. 
Um, I'm going to take this opportunity to note that it is just about eight o'clock, which was the original end time for this meeting. I think what we will do, because we, we still have people with their hands raised and we want to hear from as many people as possible, but our interpreters and captioners do need a short break. They've been working very hard this evening. So I think we will take a brief break. People can stretch their legs and we will reconvene here at 8.05. Allison, I will ask you to be patient and just hold your comment. You'll be the first one at 8.05. Um, but I think we'll let everyone take a brief break. Doug, are you good with that? All right, Doug just gives me the thumbs up. So um, feel free to avert your eyes from your computer or phone screens for a short break. And um, we will keep talking at 8.05. Thank you. So just a reminder, we'll be starting back up at 8.05, one more minute.
Okay, so I don't know if the rest of the staff and interpreters are ready. I'm getting, I'm getting a yes. So that's, that's good. Great. Thank you all. Um, so I think we will uh, get right back into it. We have about uh, a few more commenters tonight. Um, so Allison, if you are ready, uh, Shana, can you unmute Allison, please? Hi, thank you so much. Um, so I've lived in Somerville for most of the last 30 years and I'm really heartened to hear the voices of so many of my neighbors um, expressing what I'm gonna just echo tonight. Um, I live in West Somerville and I'm very concerned about uh, the changes to the 88 and 87 bus routes. Um, it essentially cuts off this part of the city from the rest of Somerville. Um, so, you know, today, if I wanted to go to Union Square, I would take one bus, the 87. Um, and with this change, it would take three buses to get to Union Square. Um, it's also really important for the MBTA to be aware when you're thinking about equity that the Clarendon Hill neighborhood, which is again, this part of West, West Somerville um, is home to a public housing development and a high rise apartment building where many, many low income disabled and elder, elderly residents live. So I don't see this as an equitable solution. Um, so I'm asking to please consider listening to those of us in Somerville and please do not eliminate the 88 and change the route of the 87. Thank you so much. Thanks, Allison. Uh, Julia Foster is uh, next and Josh Coughlin is in the queue. Shana, can you unmute Julia, please? Julia, you may need to unmute yourself. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, good evening. Um, I am Julia Forster and I use 96 every day. Um, the, I live in Medford and I am dependent on the MBTA. I use 96 every day. I strongly oppose the redesign. The new route will um, bypass George Winthrop and most of Boston Ash. This affects many residents, seniors, retirees, and residents, et cetera. The new um, design means that I will have to go to Porter versus going all the way to Harvard. And that will mean an extra stop making my route much longer. Um, also, um, I do wanna point out that with bus 96, um, Miraculously, in the past two weeks, I've been taking it and it has been full, um, I've noticed, um, for a long time. And once the driver had to set, had to stop people from coming on the bus. Um, also, the elimination of bus 80, 87, 88 will affect me too. I use those buses for food, shopping, and the Y. And when I work in East Cambridge, I will have to walk up the... Um, College Avenue, which is more than a quarter of a mile and return and have to take the green line at Leishmere um, and during the winter at night, um, it will be a long walk back and forth and it's not safe to walk at night. And that's really all I have to say. And thank you very much. Thank you for your comments tonight. And thanks for everyone for their patience and waiting too. Um, so Josh Coughlin is next and Lena Webb is in the queue. Josh? Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes. <clears throat> okay, hi. So um, I'm from Burlington. I just wanted to voice some very serious concerns I had regarding the proposed elimination of the 354. Um, I, know, I know which is uh, shared by a few other people here, but um, quite frankly, I think the decision to eliminate our fast growing towns only one seat ride to downtown Boston is pretty ridiculous and honestly kind of insulting, especially considering the T is trying to pass this off to us as an upgrade. Um, 
unlike many other communities nearby that are facing changes, we have no rail service whatsoever. We can't just shift our ridership to a local commuter rail station because it doesn't exist. We, we don't have one. Um, this bus is the lifeblood of commuting to downtown from, from our town. Compare Burlington to Braintree. Both towns have very similar economies with offices, a large mall, and countless other retail and restaurant options, similar population densities, and similar roughly 11 mile distances from downtown Boston. Yet while the latter has the red line, two commuter rail stations and a plethora of bus routes, in the eyes of the MBTA, we apparently don't even deserve a rush hour only bus ride to downtown Boston. I think the T is extremely naive to assume that the average 354 rider in our car centric community is just going to accept a much longer, more frustrating and indirect ride with multiple transfers. Um, look, I'll be honest with you. I've lived here my entire life. I've been riding the T pretty much as long as I've been able to. Um, and I can almost guarantee that large swaths, if not a wide majority of existing riders were just going to drive to work. Um, I know some people may be thinking, oh, you know, who cares if we inconvenience some suburban commuters, but this impacts much more than just us. Hundreds of cars cramming into our already clogged highways, uh, further worse in Metro Boston's already apocalyptic traffic, as well as polluting our air. Also, since the 354 runs in both directions at rush hour, it also cuts off residents of uh, Boston and Medford from a convenient and fast connection to the plentiful job opportunities of Burlington and Woburn. This cut in service is completely hypocritical of the MBTA. Josh, I'm going to ask you to wrap up, please. Of better connections to non-downtown centers. Okay, thank you so much for your comments tonight. Um, so we will go to Alina Webb next with Janice Ellison in the queue. And I will remind all of our uh, speakers tonight, if you could speak uh, slowly, um, so the interpreters uh, and captioners uh, can keep up with things, it would be greatly appreciated. Lena? Hi. Um, Thanks very much for holding this meeting. Um, one thing that's been awesome is hearing how passionate people are about their bus routes. Um, I'm a West Somerville resident um, and I'm no exception and I'm here to speak on the 87 as so many already have. Um, you know, so what, I live in the Clarendon Hill neighborhood um, and a lot of people go to the market basket. A lot of people, you know, are going down to Union Square and, you know, it's, chopping it in that trip to Union Square into three lines, one of which is between Davis and Porter, which is probably like a quarter mile and involves people getting off the bus and then back on another bus. Um, for me, that'll be like a minor inconvenience and I'll probably ride my bike to Union instead. For people with carts, strollers, mobility, aids, it's going to be life-changing for the worst. Um, I've seen a lot, you know, a, a lot of people, including myself, I don't have a car, so I have a push cart and I bring it down to Union Square to go to Reliable Market, etc. cetera. Um, and in general, um, bus routes connect people to far more businesses, local businesses than does the um, Green Line extension. And I just hope that people don't look at the Green Line extension and say, okay, well, they have this cool new thing now and it kind of goes in the same places, then we can reduce these critical routes. The 87, in my opinion, is perfect as it is. Um, I love it and I use it a lot. But again, I'll be able to bike all around to the places that will become very inconvenient for me um, and other people won't have that luxury. So especially people coming from the low income housing at um, the Clarendon Hill Towers. So um, thanks very much for the meeting. And I hope you do listen to um, the folks that have been speaking for the 87 and um, West Somerville residents um, and mobility impaired and the elderly. Thanks. Thank you, Lena. Um, Janice Ellison is next and we have someone on the phone um, in, on the, uh, in the queue. Uh, the last three digits of the phone number is in our 908. Um, oh no, I'm sorry. It's, it's Janice, I'm sorry, then Tori Antonino and then the phone. My apologies. Um, so Janice, uh, you can now speak. Hi, thank you. Can you hear, can you hear me okay? I can, thank you. Okay, Grant, thank you. Um, I've been talking to people at the Lechmere bus boarding area and on the 87, which I take. And um, it, I mean, for about a week now, uh, about 85% 
easily 85% of the people that I have spoken to had not heard anything about these changes uh, and are horrified. They're, they say, they can't, I need this to get to work, doctor's appointments, of course, market basket. And some people do say, well, I'll have to drive, but so many people don't have that option. They completely depend on the bus. So I am concerned for one thing that, uh, that the uh, public comment is ending in just a few days when so few people have had a chance to, to sign up for the comment. Um, I mean, I'm sure you've had a lot of comments, but so many people have not heard about the changes and therefore haven't had the chance to, to make a comment. I, I think that it's really important to extend the public comment and also to keep those, the 80, the 87, the 88, uh, I, I neglected to say I live in Cambridge, but, uh, and use the, um, uh, the buses and the, and the Bleachmere Station general area. Um, that's it, really. We need more time for public comment. We need to keep these buses for people who need them, uh, who absolutely rely on them and have no other way to get to their important things. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Janice. So Tori is next, and then we have the person on the phone uh, after Tori. So Tori? Oh, you seem to have lost Tori. Okay, so, oh, there's Tori. Yeah. Sorry. Hi, got me? Yeah, got you now. Hi, my name is Tori Antonino. Uh, I live in Union Square. And what, I have a few questions, I guess. One of them is um, there seems in, in Somerville in particular, I, I see the frustration and I'm concerned about those who, who need to get from Union Square to Davis Square to Clarendon, you know, market basket has to be a central part of this design because it is an affordable grocery, st grocery store and people need to get to it. And, um, and, and so I was just wondering like, who, who is benefiting? Who's, who's the person, the people who are benefiting the most? And I was listening to the comments and I, again, I feel for my residents of Somerville, I feel for my elderly neighbors, I feel for those who, um, who have ADA accessibility issues because perhaps a lot of transfers is gonna be easy for some people who are mobile. And somehow perhaps it's quicker, I don't totally understand it, but that's not gonna work out or be easier for those who, who have, you know, who are carrying a cart of groceries from Market Basket to get back to where they live. So um, I, I, and I was listening to the people from Longwood and the people from Dana-Farber, all who spoke in favor. And I'm just wondering, I'm, I don't know who, who from Somerville was sitting on this design team, but there, there's, a, there's, there's a missing component. I'm just looking at the maps from what's happening today to what's going on, lo losing the 87. And uh, all I see is the 90 going from Union to, to, to Davis. And in general, it looks like transportation in neighborhoods, closer connections are being sacrificed for moving people from, from other cities around. So I people in my neighborhood who need to get from one end of Somerville to the other, are being sacrificed because of of more of a inter um, an intercity network intra city network. Um, okay, I th I'll submit comments in writing and thank you very much. You've been a wonderful uh, moderator. Oh, thank you. Appreciate yeah. that. Um, okay, so we have a, a phone person, uh, someone on the phone right now, and then Debbie Kanoa. Uh, in the queue. So uh, Shana, can you unmute our uh, caller? Okay, the name here is Ralph Walton. And what caused me to, to jump on the, on the hand waving was uh, when, you, when your uh, people said that you were looking at all trip data. And I started to wonder, since one of the main uh, inputs into the system is watching uh, cell phones move around, uh, it 
seems that that's biased toward picking up long, long, uh, long trips, but uh, may have a, a, a defect in that uh, some short trips made as uh, shopping trips, uh, uh, small family outings, or uh, or by the elderly may completely be uh, missed because. Uh, because the per because the person uh, uh, moves so little or so slowly uh, from uh, from their origin to their destination and the endpoints of the trip are, are are just not even clear. I mean, they could be mistaken for uh, for for uh, the um, for a, uh, uh, a a a fit person just taking a walk or something like that, rather than a, a shopping trip. A lot of people seem to have uh, have uh, commented on 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 that very fact that uh, that endpoints for shopping trips seem to be being missed by this uh, by by this system. So I I, I hope that uh, you can find a way to get a, a, a good good um, handle on what the elderly are doing, even if it's a uh, waiting for a bus to show up uh, at their corner on a, on a bench and taking it for three stops to 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 the local okay. store. So, yeah, so, so that's 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 the sense of my comments there. Thank is you to, is to watch the uh, the sampling. OK, thank you so much for your comments. Um, we have Debbie Kanoa next and Ryan Eric in the queue, Debbie. Hi there, can you hear me? We can. Great, thank you. So Debbie Kanoa, I live in Somerville um, on Broadway uh, near uh, Ball Square area. So we're a family of four. We use the bus to get to school, to get to practice. Um, so the the removal or you know omitting 89 and 80 will really create um, uh, a hardship on, on our family. Um, we do rely on the connectivity to uh, the 89 getting to Davis Square to take the red line. We take the 89 to get to Sullivan Station for the orange line. So there's there's parts that make the commute in the city um, very uh, kind of accessible, and also getting to downtown. You know, as as the the 89 and the 80 run at the moment. I do appreciate that we have the green line, you know, coming in. But again, that connectivity within the city is, is going to be missing for me. Like I want to be able to take this, the bus, you know, half a mile carry, um, whatever it is I need to carry back, um, and, and be able to get home, you know, at a, at a reasonable time and not have to transfer and walk, um, a, a fair amount. So I appreciate that people are voicing their opinion. We do see that the 89 already has a dedicated bus line in on Broadway in Somerville. So Again, thinking of the MBTA, there's already infrastructure in place in Somerville on Broadway. So keeping the 89 and the 80 to me um, seems like a reasonable thing to advocate for. So again, I'm advocating for what's within our immediate neighborhood. But I do appreciate hearing everyone's um, input and how this is, uh, you know, as a moderator, you know, doing great. So thank you very much for having the meeting and please keep um, in mind the effect of the connectivity between within the city having the 89 and the 80 resume as well as well as the ct2 thank you okay. thank you debbie uh ryan is next with uh yancy fang in the queue ryan ryan you may need to mute yep Ryan, can you hear us? Yes, I'm here. Great. All Wonderful. right. My name is Ryan and I'm a private citizen. I li live in uh, the Linden Square neighborhood in Malden, Massachusetts. And I commend the effort that you are doing uh, as far as connecting uh, uh, EJ communities, low, my, uh, low income communities and minority communities. However, I have some concerns in my specific neighborhood. Um, uh, the 
the first concern I have is with the 108 bus. I ride that bus all the time. And there are high school kids that constantly ride that bus, that rely on that bus for um, transportation to the high school, uh, as Malden Public Schools does not have um, a robust bus system. Um, the second thing is, um, and that's going to be removed from Linden Square. The second issue is that um, the 426 is uh, being rerouted to Wonderland and the 428 is being cut altogether. The 426 um, is a reliable one seat bus route to downtown where people could access uh, things such as businesses, uh, office, office buildings and uh, courtrooms, which was mentioned before uh, by a commenter before. Um, and this is all happening while a distribution center was, is going up in Revere, right across the street from the Stop and Shop. That is a major concern. I went to a meeting um, uh, sometime earlier with the MBTA and they were unaware that this uh, distribution center was even going up. And this is a huge impact. My question for you is, are you gonna look at the impact of projects like that going up before changing these routes? Because I understand that this is a regional reconfiguration of routes, not a local reconfiguration of routes. So thank you, Ryan, um, for your comments. I think I'll just broadly say that I think the T is listening to all the feedback, including um, information about development parcels and you know uh, key locations, senior centers, et cetera, um, as they look to finalize the map. But Doug, you can nod if I've said any. Yeah, Doug, Doug's saying that that's right. So um, thank you. So yes, this feedback is critically important to us as they as the map is uh, finalized. So Yan Yancey is next with Ashley Maggiacomo following. Hello, are you able to hear me? Yes. Thank you. Uh, my name is Yangtze Fang. I am a resident of West Roxbury, and I would like to comment on some of the bus routes uh, at Wood Forest Hill Station. So first, I'd like to comment on the 34 and the 34E, which under the uh, proposal are not being uh, designated as high-frequency bus corridors. Uh, the Washington Street Corridor, based on the latest MBTA ridership data, uh, currently carries on, on the 34 and 34E alone, around 4,000 riders per day, and this is of uh, as of uh, June 2022. Um, this is extremely high ridership among those two routes, uh, and it is shocking that those two routes are not being incorporated, at least for the 34 section of those two routes, uh, as a high-frequency corridor. For comparison purposes, uh, the 71, which is currently a key bus route, currently only carries about, around 2,500 uh, riders per day, the 73 only carries around 27, 2,800 riders per day. And even the 77 in Arlington only carries around 38 to uh, 3,800 to 4,000 riders per day. So all of those, uh, and then the 220 and the 222 combination, those carry around 2,000 riders a day. So as you can see, the 34 and 34E have almost, uh, have, you know, almost doubled the ridership and uh, is not, and yet is still not being designated as a high frequency corridor. Um, and I would assume that 34, 34E do not have any, you know, ridership that is not any more peak oriented than, you know, say the 71 or 73. So um, I would strongly encourage the team to add that on uh, to the network of high frequency corridors. The second uh, comment I had was regarding the 36 and the proposed extension to the Dead Mall uh, via the VFW Parkway. Uh, that section of the road uh, uh, of the of the route would be is currently very unreliable uh, in terms of travel time for the 52, which is currently on that alignment. Uh, because the 36 is going to be coordinated with the 35 moving forward uh, for that high frequency corridor, um, it would be quite irresponsible for the MBTA to add uh, to you know add uh, tack on that. So section. I I will actually yeah. uh, ask you just to wrap up, yeah. please. Yeah. Okay. okay. And I would encourage MBT to consider, to consider uh, either ending 36 at the VA hospital where it is now or to uh, extend to only to Millennium Park and then keep the 52 on its current alignment right. because it's a less frequent route. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Um, we have two more comments of the evening and then Doug, I think we'll give some um, brief closing remarks. Um, Ashley is next and Hala, Hala Win is following Ashley. Ashley? Can you hear me okay? Yes, you are all set. 
Great. Uh, so I'm a Medford resident and I take the 96 into Harvard every day for work. Um, I get the stop right in Powderhouse Circle. And I just kind of wanted to, to second something that's already been said about the 96, about how that connection is going to be going away that's from Porter to Harvard, um, which creates an issue with either needing to walk from my location to the T to then get to Harvard, um, which is doable. But uh, there are some concerns that I think are overlooked uh, in regards to ridership on the T. For instance, a lot of people might get anxiety when in the enclosed space without exit ability that like a bus provides that sense of safety. And I think that having the ability to ride that like a bus route instead of feeling like you have to take the train is something that should be considered for all people, especially as we're emerging out of this pandemic. Um, so I just wanted to lift that up as a concern. Uh, secondly, I do want to echo what many people have been saying in regards to the 89, 88 and 87 as being critical routes to the neighborhoods of East Somerville and that they need to continue to support that community. And we need to make sure we're being very careful with our uh, being equitable to these groups of people who might not be being captured using the cell phone data as the measurement for ridership. Um, but that's that's all I really have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. Um, and our final commenter of the evening, um, Hala Hala Win. Hi. Um, can you hear me now? I can. Great. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Uh, thanks for taking my command. I am a writer, a regular ride, daily rider of 89 bus, lived in Winter Hill, Somerville. And uh, our kids go to um, Ball Square and we walk in uh, Davis Square and 89 bus. Um, the proposed plan is to eliminate both of them. And that's a, a disaster. Uh, we are a new immigrant family of nine people who do not write and don't have bus, uh, don't have the license or anything. It will be a disaster to not have 89 bus anymore. Um, so please really, really consider eliminating both of them uh, or at least leave one of them, which is, uh, you know, some bearable walking uh, distance. So um, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. And I do, before I turn it over to Doug, wanna thank everyone for the thoughtful comments, both verbal and written this evening. I know it's been a long evening and we really do appreciate you taking the time. Um, Doug, do you wanna give any closing remarks? Yes, thank you very much, Reagan. Um, I'd like to echo what Reagan said. Thank you all so much for your really thoughtful comments on this. We really appreciate your, your input and your engagement with this process. Um, as we said earlier in the presentation, we are planning on making meaningful changes to the proposed bus network based on the feedback that we have received throughout this process, including what we've heard here tonight. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? I think it's, yeah. Um, if you'd like to submit written comments to us, um, we certainly welcome that. You can email our email address, betterbusproject at mbta.com. Um, if you'd like any additional information about the proposed bus network, you can find all that information on the project website, mbta.com slash BNRD. Um, we also have a in-person public hearing taking place Thursday night uh, downtown at 10 Park Plaza, um, which is the MassDOT and MBTA offices. Um, and the public comment period will be closing at the end of the month on July 31st. So if you have questions that you'd like to share, uh, please submit them by then. And as I said before, we will consider and review all of the comments that have been made through this process. Uh, we really appreciate everyone's time tonight and all the feedback you shared with us. So thank you very much for joining us. And with that, we will adjourn this hearing.